This is Tekken. It's undoubtedly one of the most recognizable names in fighting game history. And this is Katsuhiro Harada. He's one of the most recognizable faces in fighting game history, even though his face has always been partially obscured by those sweet, sweet off-brand Ray-Bans. How you feel about him and his ties to Tekken largely depends on how you feel about all the memes. Eh, uh, panda. <laughs> But for better or for worse, he's changed the course of the fighting genre forever. So, as Harada would say, Shut up, the shit to the head down. Oh, and also be sure to like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming. When Namco's Tekken first fought its way into the arcade scene in 1994, it wasn't regarded as much more than a wannabe Virtua Fighter. Which makes sense, because the man who designed it, Saichi Ishii, also helped design Virtua Fighter. Of course, the dismissive hand-waving of Tekken only lasted as long as it took to play a single match. Right from the beginning, it was clear that this fledgling 3D fighter was going places. Tekken's four-button layout made it unique as well as ultra-realistic. With each button mapping an individual arm or leg, players had never experienced such a high level of control. Unlike other fighting games of this period, Tekken was mostly grounded in reality. Aside from the Jaguar Luchador, the bear, and whatever the hell Yoshimitsu was originally supposed to be. Add to that the unbelievable graphics for the time, as well as the incredible story for the genre, and Namco had an instant hit on its hands. The game originally struggled to contend with the staggering popularity of its Virtua Fighter counterpart, but one year later, when it was ported over the PlayStation, Tekken became the first game on the console to sell over a million copies. Obviously, with this much momentum, Namco was happy to continue ramping up the would-be franchise, so development on Tekken 2 went into full swing. The biggest advancement made here was the switch from 30 FPS, which was what most fighting games were locked in at, to the full 60 FPS. Although the Virtua Fighter series was still beating it out on arcades, Tekken 2 managed to outsell its predecessor, and it paved the way for 1997's Tekken 3. For the first two games in the Tekken franchise, our man of the hour, Katsuhiro Harada, had served as consulting advisor and a voice actor. By the time the third game was being developed, the tides at Namco were changing. Ishii left the studio to pursue his own indie development dreams, allowing Harada to step up to the plate as co-designer and co-producer. This was the first step in a new direction for the Tekken franchise, literally, because the third installment added sidestepping as a feature for all the characters. The ability to move in three-dimensional space wasn't an entirely unheard of idea for fighting games. In fact, two characters in Tekken 2 were able to do it, but it had never been done to the level of success that Namco achieved in Tekken 3. Compounded with new tech role, this made for an entirely original experience, one that was dynamic, tactical, and refreshingly challenging. All words fans would soon come to use about Hirata's personality. Don't ask me for And one year after its release, Tekken 3 had not only become the best-selling and best-reviewed Tekken game of all time, but it finally beat out Virtua Fighter in terms of sales. It took only one year for Hirata and Namco to produce yet another Tekken title, 1999's Tag Tournament, which heavily featured tag team battles and was a spin-off from the main series. Though it was praised for its technical quality holdover from previous installments, Tag Tournament did very little in the name of progress. Plenty of people still bought the console version of the game and played it in arcades, but its true benefit was the time it afforded Namco to focus on the next proper installment. Which is good, because it would mark Harada's first official outing as the main director for the franchise, and Namco would pressure him to have it finished by the time Virtua Fighter 4 was released in 2001. It succeeded, but not without a few scrapes along the way. Like Tekken 3, Tekken 4 was aiming to take the franchise in a bold new direction. Unlike Tekken 3, some people really hated it. While some complained about the smaller roster and the strange character designs, the biggest offender was the actual gameplay. Tekken 4 saw a massive overhaul on practically every front of its gameplay experience. Several maps included uneven terrain, making it frustratingly difficult to land hits on your opponent. Character balancing went out the window. Sidestepping was smoothed out to feel more like Namco's Soul Calibur series, and the arenas were no longer infinite. Instead, they had walls to slam people into. These changes brought on by Hirata annoyed longtime fans, and today, Tekken 4 is still seen by many as the weakest game in the main franchise. Hirata had been working on Tekken since the beginning. Maybe he was a little too overly imaginative when it came to reinvigorating the game, but he was ambitious, driven, and he understood what made Tekken special on a fundamental level. He proved that with 2004's Tekken 5, which is widely regarded as the beginning of the modern Tekken era. 
It's also regarded as the time Hirata's parents were the most disappointed with him, as he had kept his job secret for close to 10 years. But the disapproval of his parents was a small price to pay for such a stellar title. Systems were reworked and removed, and the crush system was added. Uneven terrain was erased from the series, but the walls stayed and were polished. They're still a feature of the series today and the one most fans have really come to enjoy. New characters were brought in, and small gameplay tweaks meant 5 felt faster and more satisfying than before. Once again, Tekken was a massive success, both critically and financially, cementing Harada as a solid choice for the head of the franchise. Until Tekken 6, that is. When fans found themselves disappointed with the lack of innovation and stale story. And then, when community morale was at an all-time low, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 was released to absolutely abysmal sales and nearly took the franchise out for good. Now, you may have noticed that the series' history hasn't had a whole lot of Harada's antics in it so far, considering the developer is who he is. This probably seems strange, but you have to remember that Harada and Namco were working diligently with their heads down to churn out games as quickly as possible, and this was the 1990s and the early 2000s. Individual devs, especially from infamously reclusive Japanese studios, weren't exactly making themselves known to the larger gaming public. Maybe the odd interview, blog post, or magazine write-up would reveal some level of personality, but nothing to the extreme levels that we would see from Harada and other similar personalities in the coming years. So what changed? The answer is short, the internet. Harada found a great deal of popularity on Twitter in the early days of the app, where he would say things like, oh, oh no, let's make sure we blur that one out. Okay, so Hirata was always a little bit of a, um, let's say, uh, rough around the edges type of guy. And he's never really had a problem matching the antagonistic energy of fans online. He very quickly made a name for himself as a developer who wasn't going to put up with the abuse. In fact, he was going to dish out his own. Some fans loved this. There was a real person attached to the franchise, one who was aggressive and authentic and maybe a little bitter considering how the Tekken franchise was performing in the 2010s. He became a meme at lightning speed and a source of entertainment for fans and critics alike. Essentially, he acted as the promotion for Tekken in a time when nobody was even sure it was going to return. Though we don't know the specifics, we do know that Harada fought to keep Tekken going and that Bandai Namco did eventually relent, as they were eyeing the esports scene pretty heavily. So began the road to Tekken 7. If 5 was the beginning of modern Tekken, 7 was the beginning of the modern Hirata. While promoting the game before its release, Hirata's online persona became much more intense. He turned up the trolling to 11 and fully leaned into his role as the face of the franchise. But he wasn't just pushing the game in the public eye. He was also working behind the scenes to refocus the series on 1v1 battles and honing the new mechanics. And it worked. Though Tekken 7 is a divisive game among fans, the sales were the best Bandai could have asked for, reaching over 3 million copies sold before its one year anniversary. Hirata was even immortalized in game as a recognition for his impact on the series. And yes, of course, his character has sunglasses. Too bad the Tekken universe is kinda serious, because dubbing his in-game stand-in, Captain never met a pair of sunglasses he didn't love, would have been pretty sick. But where do we go from here? If you're Katsuhiro Harada, you keep pushing forward into a brave new frontier fueled by backflipping kicks and overly sensitive eyeballs, which means you become a fully fledged cartoon character. From his hilariously odd fandom wiki entry that mentions his dislike of whiny fans and cilantro, to his YouTube channel where he posts conversations with famous bar patrons, interviews with prominent Tekken esports players, and chats about his love life, Hirata is a walking talking billboard for the Tekken series. If and when Tekken 8 ever comes out, we will largely have Hirata to thank for its success or its failure, both because of his role as a marketing ploy and his actual role as the franchise's director. Whether you enjoy the character he's become or not, Hirata is just as much a part of Tekken as Kazuya, Nina, and King are. The franchise sits heavily on his shoulders, and he's one of the driving creative forces behind its most prominent innovations. Though his methods might be disagreeable to some, and his decisions can often be questionable, you've got to respect his dedication, not just to the bit, but to the franchise he's poured nearly 30 years of his life into. And that's all we have today. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to subscribe to Nerdstalgia Gaming and hit the thumbs up button. And while you're at it, let us know in the comments below. Do you have faith in Harada, or would you rather have him sit down and shut the hell up?